the maze. Little Mikey was a bored boy who hated his life. He lived with his mom and his stepdad and his baby sister. His parents always nagged him to do his chores and homework. He had no friends at school where he was bullied by other kids. He had no hobbies or interests except for reading fantasy books and playing video games. One night he was playing his favorite game, The Maze, on his computer. The game was about exploring a mysterious maze full of dangers and puzzles, where the ultimate goal was to reach the center and face the evil Maze Master, who had the power to grant any wish. Mikey had never been able to beat the game, but he loved trying. He was so immersed in the game that he didn't hear his dad calling him for dinner. He came into his room and saw him playing. Mikey, turn off that stupid game and come downstairs, he said angrily. You've been playing for hours. Don't you have anything better to do? Mikey ignored him and kept playing. Mike, I'm talking to you, he said louder. Don't make me repeat myself. Mike paused the game and looked at him with annoyance. What? He snapped. His dad sighed. Mike, you need to stop wasting your time with this game, he said. It's not good for you. You need to focus on your schoolwork and your future. You need to grow up and face reality. Mikey rolled his eyes. Reality sucks, he said. This game is more fun than anything in real life. His dad shook his head. Mike, this game is not real, he said. It's just a bunch of pixels and sounds. You can't, it can't give you what you want. It can't make you happy. Mike glared at him. Yes, it can, he said defiantly. This game is my escape from this boring and miserable world. And one day, I'll beat it and get my wish. His dad frowned. What wish? He asked. Mikey hesitated. He didn't want to tell him his secret wish, but he felt a surge of anger and resentment towards him. I wish I could live in the maze, he blurted out. I wish I could leave this stupid house and this stupid family and go to a place where I can have fun and adventure and be free. His dad looked shocked and hurt. Mike, how can you say that, he said. Don't you love us? Don't you care about us? Mike shrugged. Not really, he said coldly. His dad gasped. Mikey, you don't mean that, he said. You're just saying that because you're angry. Mikey shook his head. No, I mean it, he said. I hate it here. I hate you. I hate everything. He turned his back and resumed his computer game. Leave me alone, he said. His dad stared at him for a moment, then turned around and left the room. Mikey didn't care. He felt a strange satisfaction in hurting his feelings. He felt like he could finally stand up for himself and his dreams. He played the game with more determination than ever, and then ever hoping to reach the end and make his wish come true. He didn't notice that his room was getting darker and colder, or that his computer screen was growing brighter and brighter. He didn't notice that the game was changing from a simulation to a portal. He didn't notice that he was being watched by a pair of sinister eyes from the other side of the screen. The eyes belonged to the maze master who heard Mikey's wish and decided to grant it in her own twisted way. The maze master smiled wickedly and whispered, as you wish. Mikey found himself in a dark maze where the walls were pixelated. The longer he looked at them, the more pixels he could see. It was a deep pixelation similar to a fractal. Suddenly he saw the whip maze master appear from a wisp of darkness. She was dressed in black raven feathers and smelled of oil rose and lilies. She moved slowly towards him silently, almost floating in a fluid motion. Mikey, she said softly, if you can solve the maze before midnight, I can grant you your wish. Her voice turned menacing. But if you cannot, you must stay here forever as a maze in the stat as a statue in the maze. You'll never see your family again. Just as suddenly as the maze master appeared, she was gone. Her words droned in his mind like a thousand bees trying to escape the smoke of a beekeeper. Well, I guess I should start, Mikey muttered to himself. Mikey wandered the maze for what seemed like hours. He started to get tired and hungry. He wished he was back home. He wished he had never said those horrible things to his family. He wished he was in his real life, not a strange video game maze. As he was feeling sorry for himself, something whizzed by his head. It was a small female humanoid-shaped creature with fragile-looking dragonfly wings. 
he heard an inaudible humming. He reached his hand out, and the small pixie girl landed on his hand. Hello, she said in the meekest small voice. What's your name? Mikey stammered. And where can I get food and water here? I'm looking for the end of the maze. Can you help me? The small pixie replied. I know the way. We can get some food along the way, too. Follow me. Mikey ran after the pixie as fast as he could. He followed the small creature through tunnels, over moats, around sharp, sharp corners, and across bumpy floors. They came to a large opening in the maze where old tall trees were growing. The trees had large glowing hanging fruit. Oh great, I'm starving, Mikey said. He ran over to the trees and grabbed some fruit from the low branches and started to eat. No, 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 the pixie screamed. Don't eat that. Mikey spit out the fruit and the juices started to make him feel lightheaded. The walls of the maze started to melt and the trees began to laugh. He looked around as the ground started to spin. Mikey woke with a sharp headache from a psychedelic dream. The pixie sat on his stomach and tickled him. She had been feeding him the most horrible looking grubs. They tasted like jelly beans from the fair. You silly, the pixie said. My name is Darla, by the way, she said in a sweet voice. Only the giant pit vipers and the ogres eat the trees from the fruits. They make funny dance and sing songs after eating the fruit. That's not like them. They only fight and bully. Darla, Mike spoke inquisitively. Thank you. I think you saved my life. Just then he heard a giant clock noise, and the ground rumbled with the time. The time is 9 p.m., droned a giant computer voice. Oh no, Mikey, I have to complete the maze quick. Do you know the way? Darla spoke quietly. The fairy folk never go to the end. We always are. We always get our wishes granted because we make them happen. Just then, Darla flew off. She yelled back at Mikey and said, Good luck. I'm off to make my wishes come true. Mikey continued his journey through the maze. He passed the places he recognized from the game. He followed his memory of where he remembered to go. He passed the pit vipers. He sn snuck by the camp of ogres. He ran by the statues of the fallen warriors. He came to the level he had never reached before, but only read about in his gaming magazines. He had come to the castle of the Maze Master. He hurried past the ghosts. He walked backwards so they could not chase him. He solved the puzzle pictures and the lever traps. He fell down on the last lever and cut himself badly. He was bleeding, but he remembered what his stepdad had taught him, and he put direct pressure on the wound. He ripped off his sleeves and made a bandage. He stopped and realized that he, this was not like the video game. It hurt bad, and he bled out a lot. That never happened in the game. He had come so far, he could not give up now. He was approaching the end of the maze and heard the noise of music. He could hear laughter and joy making. He could smell the scent of the maze master. He entered the final chamber and saw a masquerade party. Scantily clad dancers moved to the beat of the music. The dancers were all the creatures from the maze, dressed horrifically. He felt like he had when he ate the fruit earlier. He saw the maze master. She was beautiful. He had never noticed it before. She was coming towards him slowly. He went to reach her hands out to dance with her, but he couldn't move his arms. He looked down at his body, but all he saw was the statue of himself.